think I think that's a great segue into the second idea you want to talk about because for people who are thinking you know that command and control is the way to go industrial age thinking and by the way command and control has its place you know if there's a crisis command and control can be useful for a time the problem is after a short time it becomes toxic really fast so yeah. it's like it's got to be used limited um but you know there seems to be this dichotomy i think in people's minds that it's either it's it's an either or proposition either we can have a place where people are happy and where they're thriving both professionally and personally, or we can have high levels of growth and high net uh, profit. And I'm going to guess that, you know, your your second idea you want to share is that, no, the, the culture can and probably should be both of those things. Is that kind of your, your view here? Exactly. And, and, and the research that we've watched, oh my God, for 40 years, um, and our own experiences as leaders, and, and I wasn't a very good leader when I started, but I had some great bosses I could follow, and I had some really lousy bosses, and I knew I shouldn't do what they're doing. But the reality was we kept facing this classic viewpoint of the only job I have is to generate results. It's all my bosses care about. It's all I'm incented to do. It's all I'm told to get the rest of my leaders through my organization, no matter how large it is, to do results, results, results. And, and the reality is managing results is half the leader's job. And of course, well, what do you, what do you mean? What's the other half? And it's managing respect. Mm. And so what's interesting is that in order to help leaders do both of those things well, effectively manage results, effectively manage respect is we've got to look at the core building blocks that are so well ingrained of managing performance, clear goals, clear metrics, hold people accountable. What a surprise. So where does that fall apart? Clear goals, clear expectations, and accountability. And accountability is, is really a huge, huge part of that, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a, in a moment. But if we can help those leaders say, well, good, get clear expectations about results and then monitor progress, remove hurdles, praise alignment, redirect those folks that are not performing consistently. That's your job in managing results. Let's put the same pieces together on managing respect. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we start with leaders to say, let's kind of get to civility first. You've got some very toxic behaviors here. We can't get to respect it until we get the civility kind of done first. But let's take those same kind of pieces, get a very clear definition of what you mean by respect in your organization. And so we literally invite them and we help them define their ideal culture. And it goes to servant purpose. What are you doing to serve others? Which is interesting. Yes, I know you need to make money, but that's not inspiring to 90% of your population. So what's your servant purpose? How are you benefiting communities, families, et cetera? That's an interesting idea. Well, it's also, then I mean, it, that's really the heart of entrepreneurship, right? It's like, yeah, you you could sell snake oil for a time and maybe, you know, maybe make some money. But if yeah. you're not solving a legitimate problem that's you know, solving a pain point for somebody, in my view, you don't really have a business. I mean, that you don't yeah. have a, a sustainable business. So it's not just like some soft, you know, hey, we're making the world a better place. No, it's like you're serving not, not only the community, but your customers as well, right? How are you helping them? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's the idea that that servant purpose can be a motivator to folks that may be working remotely, may be mm. working in other countries, may be um, haven't ever had the experience of, no, really serving our customers in this way is, is in fact our biggest opportunity. So how do we do that better? But alongside that, you've got to figure out how do you manage relationships? Mm. So they're at minimal civil, but most beneficial is going to be respect, which is Define the values that you want demonstrated in day-to-day -day interactions. But then the most important piece is measurable, tangible behaviors. 
So that, for example, um, many of our clients will come to us with, as we start to coach them about, well, what are the values you're working with now? What are the values you want to have lived? Well, integrity often comes up. Well, good. Then what's someone, how is someone behaving that models integrity? And they look at us like, well, that's too hard a question. Well, you probably have some benchmark players, but what would be a good behavior? for integrity. And a very common one that we guide them to is I do what I say I will do. It's very simple. It's an I statement that means everyone's responsible for it. And it's about making and keeping promises. Now, is that a, a good definition of integrity in a workplace? It might work for you, right? But the key isn't just the agreement. The key is holding folks accountable for it. And accountability for respect is difficult if you've got this vague aspirational definition. As we get to observable, measurable behaviors, we actually can do custom surveys. Mm. And so right now we're in the middle of finishing with another client. Um, they've got 11 formal leaders out of 55 people at this plant. And all 50 people gave feedback to their direct and indirect bosses. So we've got in the next week, we're going to deliver individual profiles and guide their leaders to do coaching. Here's how you are seen as modeling our 15 behaviors. And so all of a sudden, this shifts from just as accountability for results shifts when you hold people accountable to clear goals, it shifts to Accountability for respect comes only when you've got their expectations and monitoring their performance to those respect behaviors.